Okay, so here is the last part of this chapter. Um, we're going to talk about a quadratic equation solver. So our job is given a quadratic equation. So we're going to read um, a, b, and c for a quadratic equation x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And we are going to find the solution x1 and x2 based on the discriminant value. So we all know if the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, then we have two roots, x1 and x2. If it is equal to 0, then there's only one root. And if um, it is less than 0, then the roots are imaginary. So if it is greater than 0, then we have two real roots. If it is equal to 0, then both roots are equal and there's only one root. And if it is um, less than 0, then we know the roots are imaginary. So we are going to use that condition, and we are going to use our if-else statement that we have seen, and we are going to calculate the discriminant, and based on that, we are going to calculate the roots. So here is a formula. As you see in this formula, we have x equals, we all know, minus b plus or minus, well, plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, and the other one would be minus b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. This is also an opportunity for us to see a few other functions that we haven't talked about before. These are predefined functions that are already there in some of these header files. For example, notice we have CMath included in this. So we're going to try and use some of those predefined functions and see how to use them. Now notice again we have a division operator and we are dividing by a to a. So we want to make sure that that a is not zero. So these are some things that you need to think about as you write a program as to what could cause errors. And if they are, then now that we know how to check for conditions, we must check and make sure that we don't run into those problems. So if a is equal to zero, then we need to output an error message and tell them a cannot be zero, because then we cannot divide by zero. So with that in mind, let's get started. So we have three variables that we declare, a, b, and c. And per my rules, let me initialize them. Initialize all my variables to 0 so we don't run into trouble later. Then we have a discriminant, which we are going to calculate. Initialize that to 0. Once that is calculated, based on the discriminant, we are going to calculate our roots. And of course, we have a reply that um, asks the user a question. We get an answer back. So with our um, set precision and everything being set, we read the value of a from the user first, and then we have a check if that a equals, again, remember to use a double equal to sign, do not forget, it's equal to 0, 0.0, then we tell them that it cannot be 0, and we exit using our exit command. So exit can be used to completely quit a program. If you don't want to do anything at all, then we exit. Then we go ahead and ask them to enter. We tell them, we echo the input. We say, you entered the value of A. Then we read the value of B. We do the same thing. We say, you entered this. And then we enter the, ask them to enter the value of C and echo the input. So once we have all three inputs, then we go down and we calculate our discriminant. So discriminant happens to be just the part where it says B squared minus 4 times A times C. So to use b square, you can either do b times b, or to show our power function, notice we have the power function, which, and if you move your mouse over it, notice it says it takes six different types of parameters, the first one being a double and an int. So b happens to be a double data type, 2 happens to be an integer, so we pass b and 2 to it, and that will return the power value, which is b square, which is used in this expression. So first, this gets calculated minus and then 4 times a times c gets calculated and then the 2 gets subtracted so we get our discriminant. Then we check if that discriminant is greater than 0 then our root is we apply a formula and again notice we have another function that we use which is our square root function. Notice the square root function will take only a double. So if it is going to, now you can always check the overloads to see if it is going to take a couple of other parameters, but it takes a double divided by 2a. So square root function returns the square root of the discriminant, which we have calculated here. And we know it is greater than 0 because we've done that here. And you subtract 
b from it or you do minus or you add minus b to it and you divide by 2a and then we do the same thing for the second root and then we output the two roots now we have an else if notice the else if to make it a little clearer has an uses another function called the absolute and this is really nothing but checking to see if the discriminant is equal to zero. Now remember, we are using all double values, and there is um, a chance for an error where the numbers, as you go into some of these doubles with up to 16 digits of precision, may not be exactly the same when you do some of these calculations. So in order to understand that, you must read the floating point section in the book that talks about how, for example, when you try to output 1 divided by 10. You won't get a point 0.1 exactly. So you might want to test some of those things on the computer to understand how the floating point numbers work. So to, in order to make sure that we actually get the right condition if the two discriminants are equal, then, or if the discriminant is equal to 0, then you take the absolute value of the discriminant and make sure it is less than or equal to a very small number. Notice we say point about eight zeros and then a one. So that way if there's a very small minute difference, this will take care of that and the discriminant will still be equal to zero. So if it is equal to zero, then we have only one root and you say minus b, of course the discriminant is zero, so that part of it is not there just divided by 2a. Then we take a look at the last case where if the discriminant is less than 0, then we simply tell them the roots are imaginary and we don't have to do anything more. Okay, So it is good for you to go through this and understand not only the if-else part of it, but also some of these functions that get used that you will find very useful for some of your assignments that are coming along.